Welcome on into a new episode of the Scott Sports Show. I am your host, Tyler Trumbauer. As we do each week here on the show in the fall sports season, it's Borough Football Talk to kick things off. To do it this week, joined by the usual cast, to my immediate right, play-by-play -play voice of Borough Football for WFSE, Mike Fenner, and to the far side of the stage, head Borough Football coach, Scott Browning. Coach, last week, what an exciting game that was uh, at Sox Harrison Stadium. A tough loss to the Mercyhurst Lakers, out to a 14-0 lead in this ball game. And then Mercyhurst has a little uh, streak of unanswered points at the end of the first half and then in the fourth quarter as well. Uh, what, what was it like coaching in that game, just the back and forth roller coaster it was? You know, it was um, probably not as much fun offensively as we had against Gannon. But uh, I thought we did some good things. It's um, like you said, we got off to 14 uh, point lead right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. They made some mistakes and then then we make some mistakes and it ties it up at 14-14 and it's pretty pretty even. Then right before the half we throw an interception they, and our defense did a fine job of shutting uh, Mercyhurst down, hold 17-14. Um, and then we come back in the second half and make it 21-17. I thought really we we really had a shot there to take control of the game. and. Uh, you know, once again, we just made some mistakes that uh, I wouldn't have never predicted. For instance, Joe Sullivan, a veteran center, snapping the ball over the quarterback's head. You know, not to pick on Joe, but at that point in time, I thought we had a little bit of momentum, and I thought we were going to move the football, and all of a sudden now you find yourself third and 22 or whatever the situation was. And uh, I just, I, you know, I, I, I think we continue to improve as a football team. But uh, we need to learn how to win a game and finish. <clears throat> Coach, how big of a weapon can Mitch Thomas be? I mean, on that first punt return, you get the three and out, you get the sack, Jimmy Wilson comes up with the sack, and then Thomas kind of changes the game right out of the gate. Not only a big yardage play, but a touchdown and getting you guys points on the board. How much can he be a difference maker, not only on defense, but on special teams, as we've seen? He, you know, he is. He's a difference maker on, on defense and in special teams. and. And uh, Mitchell's even been in my ear a little bit about coming over and trying to do some things with us on offense. He's a very talented football player, a very intelligent kid, uh, really understands the game, understands what our expectations are, very competitive. And when you, when you look at our football team, I think it hurts Mitchell Thomas as much as anyone when we don't come up with a victory at the end of the, our effort. And uh, he's a great kid. Certainly in that uh, punt return, <clears throat> By itself, 47 yards, got him PSAC West Special Teams Player of the Week. So congratulations uh, to Mitch for getting that one. So, Coach, you're into that second half, and, you know, you, you fought back 21-17, and you mentioned the offense maybe wasn't as fun as it was, especially in that first half before you got that opening uh, score in the second half. What do you make of the offense and maybe their just inability to have as much fun as they did the previous week against Gannon? You know, I'm not sure. I just, uh, you know, going in, I thought we had a, a tremendous game plan. We had a week to prepare for uh, Mercyhurst, whereas the previous week we had a short week. Right. Um, you know, looking back, sometimes maybe we have too much time to prepare. Maybe, maybe we need to play on a short week more often because you don't see so many things. You don't put so much offense in. You, you kind of control things just a little bit more. And uh, Plus, I thought our kids played fresher against Gannon, at least offensively, than they did against Mercyhurst. But, hey, we're still trying to find it out. Every team is different. And uh, from a staff standpoint, I don't think we've totally figured this group out. And maybe I don't think our group's figured themselves out yet. So all you can do is keep working and, and hopefully um, make positive strides this week against Slippery Rock. Coach, is it a possibility that maybe your offense that only saw 15 snaps in the first half, when they're all juiced up, amped up, ready to go out on the field, and then you see a punt return for a touchdown, an interception that only makes them go three yards to start their first trip, does that sort of put them in a funk and kind of put them behind the eight ball with not being in a, in a good flow? You, you know, I, I, th I think it's a great point. I think that uh, offensively, you know, we ran, really technically ran 14 plays. We downed, we need the, the ball right for to half. And uh, I don't think we ever got in rhythm offensively. In fact, we went in at halftime with 14 plays. And as a staff, we meet every halftime before we go meet with the players. And we looked at each other and we said, you know, we've not gathered enough information here to change the thing that we're doing. We've only ran 14 plays. And, you know, the only answer we had, and then we went out and talked to our players, was let's stay with the game plan that we came in with. If we need to make adjustments as we go, we will. But 
it's pretty hard to make adjustments at a half when you've only run 14 plays. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it, it takes you out of the flow. 14 plays, you, can't, you, you develop no rhythm, no rhythm at all. Certainly the offense basically <coughs> not even a part of the action in the first two quarters of play. Hopefully they'll be more involved this Saturday. Slippery Rock comes to town, defending conference champions, noon kickoff at Sox Harrison Stadium, senior day, regular season home finale, the like uh, this Saturday at the stadium on campus. What do you make of this SRU team now climbing as high as 13th in the national polls, uh, coming off a tight win over IUP a week ago in a thriller down to the wire. What do you make of the Rock? Well, first of all, they find a way to win. Uh, they're a very talented football team. They've got uh, tremendous depth. They're physical. They're well coached. Uh, it's a veteran football team. And, you know, I think I counted uh, yesterday before I went home 11 seniors that are starting for them four on offense, or seven on offense, and four on defense. Uh, they're very experienced. They don't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, they will force you to make mistakes. So, you know, I, I think we have uh, our plan, game plans are in place, and uh, it's just a matter of our guys, our young guys going out and executing, having some fun, and, and uh, trying to knock off the big dog. A year ago in this matchup, it was the first career start for then true freshman quarterback Jake Sisson. He's now a sophomore. He's now got the reins to this offense. What's the approach for him going into this game that's different from last year? What are your expectations of him leading this offense now against a very good defense? Our, our expectations are higher than they were last year. Last year going in, we, we really didn't know what we had in Jake Sisson. Uh, we went back, uh, myself and Joe Watson went back and watched last year's tape this morning, in fact. And, you know, we feel like, you know, I know Jake's had his struggles this year, but I think his play is much better this year than it was last year, his first start against Slippery Rock. And uh, so our expectations are high. It's time for us to go out and play like we're coached, uh, be accountable for our play, and put this darn thing together and come home with a victory. Yeah, Coach, you talked that <coughs> you said that SRU has that ability to win games. They know how to get that taken care of, and I feel that's something that maybe helps teams when you get that win early in the season. You 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 have that mindset. You know how to be on top when the clock hits zero. How tough is that as a learning curve for your team to, maybe if they're in a situation this Saturday, that they're close in the game late or in the lead late for them to finish it off? How, how much of a learning curve is that since it hasn't happened yet this year? I think, it, I think it's, it's a huge learning curve. And, and you know, it, it goes back to last week when we were up 14 to nothing. Um, I, don't, I think our team, instead of playing, kind of looked at each other and said, what's the next move? And I think as a staff, we've got to step in. We've got to help guide. But I think, I think we are learning. I think guys look back, they evaluate the situation we were in, how we handled it. And, uh, you know, every guy's got to handle it kind of himself, and then we've got to handle it as a unit. And uh, hopefully we handle it better this week than we did last week. Slippery Rock comes in as a very physical team, the top scoring team in the PSAC. Running back Shamar Green and Julian Durden over 1,400 yards combined. How do you prepare your defense for a challenge like that? Well, you know, they're going to get their plays. And uh, we've just got to continue. We've got to try to create a 60-minute game, uh, try to put ourselves in position at the end that we can win the darn thing. We've got to slow their offense down. Offensively, we've got to come up with some big plays. They're not a team that you're going to drive the ball on consistently. Although I think there's some things that we've seen, uh, but we, we ideally let's put ourselves in position to win the darn thing in the fourth quarter. There you go. They're going to try to do that this Saturday yeah. against Slippery Rock when they come to town. Noon kickoff. We got coverage on 88.9. Mike and I do starting at 11:45 for that kickoff. Borough football. SRU. Coach, good luck on Saturday. We appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Coach. Borough football talk continues on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Scott Sports Show. Borough football talk continues here in our second segment this week. To my right, Mike Fenner sticking around. Now Scott Browning out in Zach Harton, member of the Borough football squad. Zach, thanks for the time today. Appreciate that. Uh, you know, for, for, your, uh, for the team overall, obviously, numbers will, will tell a story. Records will say what it is. But one thing that Coach always says is you guys are not in a, a winless football team. You guys really in and out, you, you've had a lot of tough games, games that could have gone either way, and you easily could be just as close to 500 a winning record as you are to your current record. Do you, you agree with that? How do, you, how do you assess this football team? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, when you compare our schedule to 
other teams in the PSAC, it's just like we start off with a really strong schedule, which, you know, is not a bad thing at all. It's a good thing to play those good teams, but then again, you know, you don't have the record that some other teams that you might be, you know, right up on the same level with, and you just don't have the same record as them, you know, so. But I think we've played really strong this season, you know. Coach Browning always says, is, you know, he's not a fan of saying something like a moral victory, you know, but I think that we had a lot of games where it's just, you just need that much more to push it over the edge and you get that W, so. Zach, what do you think it'll take for you guys with a few games left uh, to try and get over that hump when you have those games? You have your Gannon game or your Cal game or, for instance, some other contests. What is the difference between being right there and then putting it all together and finishing it? Well, I mean, you know, this late in the season, it's, it's hard to stay motivated when you have the record that we have. But I think that the team's done really well and we've been able to keep that motivation. We've been having really good weeks of practices and it's just it's going to come together for us eventually, you know. We got a strong, we got, you know, still strong teams to play, but uh, I think we'll be able to get a W. Certainly. What's soon. it what's it like in, in the locker room, Zach? Uh, the guys, you know, I, I've, I hear from other players that no one is giving up on this team. No one is not fighting anymore. Everyone's still putting in the work week in and week out, just like you're undefeated, regardless of what your actual record is. How, what is the talk in the locker room and that mentality now still searching for that first win? Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, I've, I've never really, you know, my, my past years here, you know, we haven't had the best seasons either. And it's just this year, it just is one of our worst, is, you know, our worst seasons in a long time. And it's just nobody's given up. Like I said, we're having really good weeks of practice. We're still going hard and fighting. We're all getting better every day, no matter what our record is. So. Certainly, we asked a lot of team questions thus far. Looking at you individually, one of those bigger guys, you know, working hard, playing down in and down out. How do you feel you've done this season? Um, I thought I've had a decent season, done well. I think that and as an offensive line, we've really come together. And um, I mean, if you look at our stats from last year to this year, it's been a big transition. We've done a lot better this season than we ever have. Um, we're playing as a unit. You know, we're really bringing the offense, to, the offense together to try to put some points on the board. So. How do you feel you've gained that cohesiveness and that chemistry? Guys like Jake Potts, Jason Watts, experienced players, yourself. How do you feel like you guys have put it all together this year in comparison to last year? Uh, you know, it's just it, it, it's a thing that takes time. When you play games together, you just kind of get you know in sync with each other, and it just it's really come together season. Um, when we came in the camp, um, we weren't really sure who the starting five would be, and whenever you have a lot of depth and you have that competition, it really pushes guys to really give their all, and it just it just makes everybody better as an offensive line. So. Certainly competition will help you improve each other. We've talked to other, uh, your brethren there on the line with Potts, as he mentioned, Sullivan, the like on this show, and we've asked them about, uh, you know, the new offensive line coach that you guys have in Jack Corey and the tight ends coach as well. And uh, what do you feel he's done for this, for that unit, and maybe how much has he had a hand in improving your statistics from last year? Well, Jack, you know, he's, he's an alumni here, so he really loves this place. You know, he's, he's a guy that, you know, we've had a couple offensive co coaches come in, you know, they come in for a year and they're gone, but Jack's just a guy that he's around here. He's, he just graduated from here, you know, a couple of years ago, and he's been around Edinburgh, and he loves Edinburgh. So he puts his heart into everything, and he puts a lot of hours in for us, you know, to get us good scouting reports on every team that we're playing and to know how to attack every team so we can play our best. So. How difficult has it been with RJ going down with the injury along that offensive line, having to shift some players around, Potts going from right tackle to left, and guys getting rotated in? How tough has that been for you guys with trying to stick together with that? Yeah, it's that's the you know it's kind of like the story of uh, our offensive line. It's just like we you know get a couple of injuries, and it's kind of like that every season. You know, towards the end, you just you get guys that are banged up. It's going to happen. So, um, you know, you got to move guys around, and I think we've adjusted well to it. You know, a lot of guys have stepped up, and it's nice that we have the depth that we have, you know, Jason Watts able to step up and play, even though RJ went down in the middle of the game. And it's just like, you know, we didn't really miss a beat at all having guys like that come in, so. Next guy up mentality on that offensive line. So with the guys that are, are, that are up on the line, are healthy, you're gonna be looking forward at these last few games of the season. Uh, have one more home game, two on the road. Uh, good chances to get your, get a last few wins here in the season. What is the mindset for you individually and for the team overall heading into these last few weeks of the season? Well, this week, you know, it's a big one. It's the Rock. I mean, they're, you know, they're no joke, but then they're a real confident team and they're going to come up here and they might think that, you know, going against an OA team, they might be able to, you know, take a week off, but they need to understand we're not going to lay down to anybody and we're going to keep fighting and we have kept fighting against everybody. So we're going to play hard against them and then we go on the road to uh, Seton Hill and Millersville and those are two strong programs as well that 
we're going to just go out every week and take it day by day and practice hard and do what we got to do to get the W. So. As you talked about, already having a difficult schedule, seeing plenty of good defensive fronts with Slippery Rock, Marcus Martin, the leader in sacks, the defending West uh, Defensive Player of the Year as well. What does that front present to you guys as a challenge, and how do you prepare for that? Uh, they're a strong defensive line. Um, definitely one of the strongest defensive lines we've seen, even in the past couple of years, that I've ever seen. So this week of practice, you know, we're going to go against our best guys. We're going to put, you know, me on Josh Kibbe. We're going to be we're going to be practicing hard against ones on ones so that we get that look that we need to prepare ourselves for a defensive front like Slippery Rocks. Hopefully they're prepared by Saturday because that's when the Rock does come to town. Noon kickoff for the Fighting Scots against SRU at Sox Harrison Stadium. Good luck, Zach, and we appreciate the time, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Scott Sports Show rolls along after this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. The cross-country teams started their three big meets of the season, as we've heard from head coach Rick Hammer multiple times here on the Scott Sports Show. That meet this past Saturday was at Cooper's Lake Campground, hosted by Slippery Rock University, and it was the PSAC Championships. The women entered defending team champs, and they were searching for more hardware as well with the men's team searching to be in the top five as well. I joined the team down I-79 to Cooper's Lake Campground. Here is my report. That's what Edinburgh Cross Country was trying to get Saturday morning at Cooper's Lake Campground, some hardware. The women's got things off first, the defending conference team titles, champions, the ladies team. Bunched up in the beginning they were, Eden Narbaval right in the middle there, Emma Sullivan as well leading that second pack as she was competing there. Eden pulls away though as she goes through the notorious castle there at Cooper's Lake Campground as she finishes first in this one. Emma Sullivan also finishes in the top 20 helping the ladies to their second straight conference title. Anna Hosel, another top finisher as well. Ida talked about the early part of that race going in the uphills at Cooper's Lake Campground. You know, the first half of the race, uh, I wasn't that confident. Or I knew, of course, that I, I could still win. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a very hilly course. And I struggled a little bit in the uphills. Uh, so... I think the first half of the race, at least, I was maybe number six or something. Go Norway. But then, <laughs> but then uh, when the, um, we started to run some of the, the downhills, and I and I saw that they they couldn't follow in the downhills, and uh, <laughs> that, that that's when when I knew that yeah, I I can do this, so I'm I'm gonna. Right. Head coach Rick Hammer talked about what he thought the ladies did on Saturday. Well, you know, I think our women really went out and executed the race plan well. Uh, I really did think it would come down to two girls up front, and it certainly shook out a little bit different with a few more faces uh, towards the front. Um, definitely started a little bit slower, as you saw looking over the course. This is definitely a technical course with the uphill start, a lot of twists, a lot of turns. Uh, but in the end, Ida, Ida was a stronger runner. I, I had a feeling she would be in that mix. and. You know, we're going to basically rerun this race as we head into the, the regional championships in two weeks on a much flatter course, which I think kind of plays her strengths a little bit better. She's, she's pretty tough on the track. So, um, and the rest of the girls, you know, we ran fairly conservatively today with the hills. We tried to just relax up the hill um, and then really work people um, in the late stages of the race. I think we maybe spotted them a little too much ground earlier and we'll kind of make adjustments as we move towards regionals. Hopefully we can be as lucky there as we were today. The men's race followed Elliot Martin Kevich, a favorite in this one, as well as returning All-American Logan Mountain for Lock Haven. It was a packed bunch in this men's race to start off after about the first K in this contest. But then it was Logan Mountain Elliot right there, one, two, pulling away from the rest of the pack as expected. Mountain then pulls away from Martin Kevich here. Nice lead as he passes us by right there. Sizable lead over Elliot, who then has all alone himself there in front of the pack. Mountain and goes on to win this one. Elliot does continue to stay strong, finishes in second in this one. Corey Weefing also with top finishes, as well as Nowak in this one. Elliot talked about his performance on Saturday. Uh, I was waiting for Mountain to make his move. I really didn't know what kind of shape he was in. I've seen some of the times he's run, but you know, until I raced him, you know, I, I didn't know what I could do against him, so I wanted to be up front and wait for him to make that move. He is in, in exceptional shape right now, so I definitely misunderestimated him a little bit, but definitely I was you know, able to hang on and get second. So. The men's team finished fifth, but it was all about the ladies, team champions.
I'd like to thank Coach Hammer and the rest of the cross country team for accommodating me on the trip and for their time at the PSAC Championships. They will next be in action at the 2015 Division II Atlantic Region Championships on November 7th, which are hosted by Lock Haven University. Hopefully we'll have them here on the Scotch Sports Show next week to preview those championships. We're going to take a break here in the Scotch Sports Show and return with some wheelchair basketball talk. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show. Now we're going to do a season preview here as we slowly transition into winter sports as we're going to take a look at the wheelchair basketball team now on the Scott Sports Show as I'm joined by two representatives from that program now here on the show. To my immediate right, we have their head coach, Jim Glatch, and to the far side, one of their standout players, Ayuba Ali. Guys, thanks for the, joining me and for the time today on the show. Coach, I think it might be fitting to start off by just maybe kind of you know, explaining what exactly you guys are doing there on this wheelchair basketball team. A lot of, maybe a lot of people don't really understand what, you know, that we, A, even have one. B, you know, it's not, a, it's not an official NCAA sport. Maybe not, it doesn't get all the headlines that maybe a wrestling does or a men's basketball, women's basketball. So it might be good to just maybe paint in the picture for us a little bit. Well, wheelchair basketball is the same as able-bodied basketball, except we're using a wheelchair to get up and down the court. Uh, I think the... One of the things that people look at is, okay, we have wheelchairs, so the baskets have changed, the lines have changed, the game, the ball, everything. Uh, when you take a look, a hard look at the game, it's the same game. Uh, the, the biggest difference is there's no lateral movement in wheelchair basketball. So you'll see the guys hopping around a little bit, tilting up, uh, sliding over, but a lot of it is how they pivot their chair. Uh, after that, you know, our offenses and defenses are pretty much the same as what you would watch on TV or in Macomb with our men's and women's team. We're going to run a motion offense this year. Uh, we're going to do a lot of picking and passing, uh, try to get inside. We added some size this year. so. Uh, and then the other part of our defense is primarily a man-to-man -man defense where we're getting chair on chair and making sure people don't get in. It's a non-contact sport, but if you show up at a game, you're going to smell a little rubber burning, and uh, you're definitely going to hear some clanging going on. Certainly, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely some bumper cars type atmosphere out there occasionally in those physical uh, contests. So you mentioned you got some size this year. Last year, it was, it was a youthful bunch, yes. uh, kind of reflecting on a year ago. What happened to the program in the offseason, additions of some recruits, and just probably the overall maturity of the team you had a year ago? Well, I think one of the nice things is we're returning our first five from last year. At the end of last year, uh, the biggest thing you look at is where do you need to grow? Where we needed to grow was to maintain our first five. We did that. The second part was to add depth, uh, and I think we did a, a pretty good job with that as well. So uh, Ayuba, along with Derek Strickland, uh, Blake Rush, uh, our All-American Mikey Adams, and then uh, Shane Knox, all returned. And that's exciting. And we see in practice the difference of having that one year of experience together playing makes against any other five we put on the floor. Uh, brought a young man in named Kevin Athley. He gives us some added size so we can run some different lineups, but also gives Derek a break. Derek didn't get a break last year. I uh, brought another kid in named Seamus McAnally, both are from Baltimore, Maryland. And Seamus gives us the break for Mikey and Blake and even Shane that we didn't have last year. And then we have some other kids that we brought in. Um, uh, Mikhail Prosens from Utah will give this young man a break. Uh, we've got kids named Will Speed and Michael Gun uh, Garcia. Both are going to add to our depth and give us some different lineup looks that other, country, or other teams in the country haven't seen yet. So it's going to be exciting. Certainly, yeah, a lot of new pieces this team. Ayuba, for you, A, I'm sure you're happy that you get here, heard you're going to get a break uh, uh, this time around. But what's it like in the, in the practice, in the locker room with these guys, uh, now knowing that you got that year of experience, you're a mature team, and you, you've been there before. You know, you, this is not just your first time around the block. Well, um, this semester it's been really good. Like the practice has been a, like a lot better atmosphere that we've had now that there's a lot more guys on the team. Mm -hmm. um, practice has been really good. We have a lot of guys that are showing up on time, going hard during practice, and we're hoping that the results show during games. Certainly, Coach. Uh, so going into this season, you know you're, you're going to start off with Canadian Academy this upcoming weekend once again, and then you have a lot of good uh, talent that you're going to be seeing uh, across the United States, really during your season, what is your mindset coming into this season, knowing what you have returning, what you've brought in, and what the opponents are going to bring for you? We're cautiously optimistic. Is, you know, every time uh, you run into another coach in the, in the field house or even the boss, you know, how's the season going to go? We're cautiously optimistic. 
uh, based on returning five starters uh, and, the, and the depth that we've added. Uh, as you have pointed out, it's been a positive atmosphere in practice. So we look at that. Uh, we've already started scouting some of the other teams we're playing against. Some, you know, obviously every team is going to bring in some new talent. But we feel like we've gapped, uh, taken that gap away that was there last year. And again, a lot of that was the depth. Uh, if you look at a lot of our games, and uh, the statistics don't show the whole story, the first 30 minutes of every game, we're within five points of everybody in the country. And when you lose by 15 and 20 points, a lot of that is exhaustion. I don't think you'll see some of that this year. And uh, so we're excited about that. Opening up in Canada makes it fun. You're playing uh, national programs, teams that represent their countries. So we're going to get a really good push early on. These guys are going to get tested right from the get-go. And we'll get to see what their medal is, but also they'll get a chance to see what the game's played like at the high level. Certainly, it's good talent to get right out of the gate. Ayuba, for you, um, Coach was saying how there's a lot of depth which is going to help in that latter part of the contest. What is the, uh, is the team feeling the same way? What is their kind of mindset, knowing that, like you said, people are going hard at practice, practices are going better? What is that mindset from the player perspective? Well, from player perspective, I'd say that each day in practice, I get to compete against guys that are either not on my level or more so they can push me to get better as each practice goes on. And it's, it's hard last year that there's only eight guys at practice, and so you're kind of not, say, not playing hard enough, but there's no one to push you. And so this year, I know that um, when I'm going against the first five, for example, I can play, play harder than I normally do against anyone else. Certainly, yeah. What is it like in, in practice when you, you know, when you have those other guys? We talked about it with football, and they say competition's helping it out. You say you got those other five. Maybe you know, people that aren't athletes don't understand the difference between only having eight guys in practice and having 10, 12 guys in practice. You kind of just touched on that again, but what, what is the atmosphere like, you know, just having a bigger group to practice with? Well, I mean, the biggest thing the coach is always telling us is communication. And so when 14 guys in the team, we're always trying to talk loud. It's got to be loud and it's got to be fast. It's got to be always, it can't stop at any time. And so with 14 guys on the team, there's always someone that's with you, you know, if I'm pushing on defense, I always got, I should have four other guys on defense, not worrying about what offense is doing, but being able to talk with each all of the four and talking and back and forth. Certainly, Coach. So you said cautiously optimistic. Uh, you know, things are obviously building up. You have a lot of different tournaments, the, your own tournaments that you're going to try to get in this year and get as many games in, a lot of action. It's all going to build up to the Nationals uh, tournament at the end of the year, which is right here in town uh, going to save some travel expenses for that one. How excited are you that Edinburgh Macomb Fieldhouse is going to be the site for the Nationals this year? It's, it's, it's a wonderful honor to host College Nationals. We, the last time we hosted was 2007, and the house was full. Uh, every time Ed, we played three games that weekend, the house was full. So that's going to be a priority is to, to fill the house, to make sure that Edinburgh is well represented, not only on the court, but in the stands. Uh, I think the other part of that is you get to showcase a game that, as you mentioned at the beginning of the, the broadcast, a lot of people don't know. So we want to get the word out, hey, Nationals are here. These are the best teams in the country coming in to Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. And it's a great educational tool. You know, we want to get school kids there. We want to get a lot of people in the gym. Uh, but I think just having the National Tournament there and knowing what we have done in the past in Nationals, the last time we hosted, we finished second in the nation. So we want to put a team on the, on the court. Todd Jay said this to me about two years ago. Hey, you know we're hosting Nationals in a couple of years. We'd like to see you back where you were in 2007. A little, little bit of pressure from right. Todd. But that's the, the message was heard loud and clear. And I think what we're about to do this year is, is going to represent a, a really good team. Uh, I think the, the borough faithful will be very proud of us. And, and again, it is an honor. Anytime you get to host a national tournament, it's a real honor. Certainly honored to host Nationals cautiously optimistic about how they're going to finish in that. That's the wheelchair basketball team from Edinburgh. They'll get things kicked off this weekend against Canadian Academy with some national teams north of the border. Guys, thanks for the time and good luck this season. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. No problem. The Scott Sports Show will continue after this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Scott Sports Show. We continue now with women's volleyball who continues to impress as we continue with two representatives from that women's volleyball program. To my immediate right, we have head coach Missy Sobolski, and to the far side, we have senior member of the team, Mara Maycock. Ladies, thanks for the time today. Coach, we talked last time. We figured out that 
it, you guys maybe are some scientists, right? I think was the joke that we had <laughs> last time. We were building up some huge lesson plan here for, for Borough Volleyball, but the lesson continues, and you guys are acing the tests. 12-match winning streak, 25-2, and 14-1 and in the conference. You said you were happy last time. A few more matches under your belt since then. Has the elation increased? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, um, it's just a fun ride right now. Um, the girls are playing well. I think they're enjoying themselves. Um, and reality is about to set in that they're going to have to repeat everybody in the West starting on Friday. So it's about to get a little more serious um, when it comes down to trying to really get that PSAC berth and really having to get the wins on the road because we're out of everybody left in the West, we have one left at home. Everybody else is on the road. So it's going to be tough for us. Certainly. Mar, before we get into, you know, before things get more difficult, we want to enjoy, you know, the celebration a little bit longer. So how, how are the ladies been reacting to this stretch? I mean, you had two big, long winning streaks now in this season to put together this nice overall record you've had. Coach said it's a nice ride. How are the ladies enjoying that? Um, we're all loving it. It's, it's always fun being successful. And I feel like we just keep getting better as a team, and our team unity is really there. And, like, that's what makes it fun is we're all friends on and off the court. Certainly, and you have that cohesion and that togetherness on the court, off the court helps as well with the play overall. Mara, uh, for you, you've kind of had a little bit of a transition this year. Uh, your last year with the Scots, but you had to step up uh, to the libero position now, and you're kind of shaking things up for your last year. What was kind of your mindset? How did that position change come about? Kind of tell a story for us, if you will. Uh, well, there's really n um, no story to it. Uh, Coach just told me last spring, actually, she said she could be considering me for a libero. And I just came in to the preseason expecting to hit or be a libero, one or the other. Um, I just always try my best and try as hard as I can. And wherever I fit the need to be, that's fine with me. And obviously, me being libero, the team's having great success. So um, I'm happy with that. Certainly, Coach, from your side, why did you uh, see her as a potential candidate for that opening at that position? Um, she has just the ability to react very well defensively on the court. Um, and we needed somebody back there um, to try to really take a leadership role and be very vocal as the leader of the defense. And I knew she was very, she's got the ability to be a great leader and she's very vocal on the court. So it's, um, it, was, it just seemed like a right fit. Certainly, and it's worked out thus far, like you said, success team and individual success as well. Were there any nerves with that, Mara, at all? Or, I mean, have, did you have any previous experience at that position, maybe at the high school level? No, not, not really. Um, it's actually, I've played basically every position you can. I started off as a middle when I was little, um, right side, setter, outside hitter. I've played them all except libero, and it's kind of funny that my final year I am playing libero. But, I mean, no nerves. It's just kind of... The defensive aspect of being an outside hitter, it's passing, it's playing defense, it's serving, it's just all those things. Certainly, Coach. So with all with her there, we've talked to the rest of the starters here on the show. So we've gotten every angle from the starting roster. Now that roster, you said, has to go into the difficult PSAC West. How? Just kind of talk about how difficult that is to not only play in this tough division, but also what's it like got to go through it again? Because not only do you have a scouting report on them, but they have information on you too. The, the biggest difficulty, I think, is going to be that as the season goes on, every team starts to get better. So, you know, we may have caught some teams on, uh, on a bad night or they just ha might have been struggling as their, their season was developing and we just got further along faster than a lot of the teams did. And now it's going to be, you know, where these teams are further along, they're maybe playing a little bit better, you know, it's, it's going to be us playing teams that are maybe um, a little bit more confident than the way, what they were when we first saw them. Mara, the ladies going into the PSAC West once again in this final round, a lot of it being on the road, no strangers to playing on the road. Mm -hmm. This team is Edinburgh. What is their mindset going against the West? Maybe for those younger players, too, that don't really know how difficult the Western Division is and how tight it's going to be at the end. Um, I mean, I would say we still have the same mindset going into every game. I do think we have that kind of confidence in us that we have beat them before, and I think we can actually use that more to our advantage and know that, hey, we've done this, we can do this. And I just think, I mean, other teams are getting better, and I just think we keep getting better too on, on the court as well. 
Coach, I know you said this a few matches back to me about trying to keep the ladies focused on, on really not counting on that a team is, oh, we've beaten them before and that we've done this before. How do you still keep them motivated, motivated each and every night saying, you know, even though, oh, well, we swept them last time, it could be a totally different team this time around because they've improved? Yeah, we just pretty much stick to the same script that we have. We do our scouting report. We show them the video. Um, we try to show them a good video of them playing. Um, so that we're seeing where they're scoring and, uh, and then we're also seeing um, them against a good team that might be scoring against them as well. So kind of show where we could score against them as well as where they're going to possibly try to score against us. Um, just We just follow the same script. I mean, really, we take one match at a time. Uh, we're focused and I, I really think they know that their goal is, you know, they want the PSEC championship. So. Um, they're going to take one team at a time and they're going to bring it to them and that team's going to have to play really darn perfect in order to beat us. Connecting some dots, getting into individual matches and teams. Last time you were on the show, we previewed your two home matches you had against Cal and Seton Hill. And you said the team, I think the word we used were solid squads. And mm -hmm. they came out, got first set victories in both matches. And then your ladies fought back, took three on, on the route, route to a match victory. What uh, did you see in those matches? How do you feel the ladies performed? And how did you like that resiliency? being down one nothing, but fighting back. You know, I know everybody wants to win in three, but boy, it's nice to watch your team come, you know, come right back and roar and right back after they drop a first set. In both sets, I think in the first set, we were, we were um, right there and we kind of had the opportunity if we really wanted to put it away, we could have, but um, then just came right back in the second, third and fourth and um, played well. I, I like having to go through that because it's that adversity and seeing that, uh, seeing how our team responds and they responded well to it. And they're going to have to um, they're going to have to step up and play against two good teams this weekend too. Right, talking about those going on the road for that one as well. Clarion, IUP, the two teams coming up this week. What is what is your message to the ladies this week in practice when you go up against the Crimson Hawks and the Golden Eagles? It's never easy to beat a team twice, and it's never easy to beat a team on the on the um, on the road. So you need to be focused, disciplined, and basically we need to outserve and pass them. If we can outserve and pass either of those teams, we should win. There you go. Looking for two more road wins. Only two more home matches left. Slippery Rock and then non-conference action later on in this month before they wrap things up on their road to the PSAC Championship, hopefully, for these women's volleyball team that we have right here at Edinburgh. Ladies, appreciate the time as always, and good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Scott Sports Show will roll along after this commercial break. Do not go anywhere. Congratulations to Elliot Martinkevich and Ida Narbaval of the men's and women's cross country teams for being named this week's male and female Scots of the week for Edinburgh University Athletics. Elliot finished second at the men's race at the PSAC cross country championships this past weekend at Cooper's Lake Campground, earning him first team all PSAC honors and also set him up nicely for the upcoming regional championships. And Ida won the women's race and the individual women's title being named this year's Women's Outstanding Cross Country Athlete of the Year for the PSAC as she was the first freshman to win the individual women's title since 2009 and the first Edinburgh Fighting Scott to win an individual cross country PSAC title since 2006. Ida's contributions with the first place finish helped the Scots as a whole capture their second straight conference team title heading into regionals. This, up this next weekend, where they are also the defending champions. Congratulations to both Elliot and Ida, who we heard from earlier in the Scott Sports Show. Now let's take a look at what is upcoming for Edinburgh student athletes. Interesting week and up ahead as we have most of the action taking place on the road with the women's volleyball and women's soccer teams having some road contests. Women's volleyball is at IUP and at Clarion as well, the women's soccer team on the road earlier in the week at IUP and then also is at Mansfield on Saturday. Also on Saturday, the wheelchair basketball team who we talked to earlier gets things underway north of the border and the only in the lone home contest, the football game Saturday noon home finale for the 2015 season. So make sure you go out and support them. That's a noon kickoff at Sox Harrison Stadium. That's all we have for this week. Thanks for watching and go Burrow.